Bojack Horseman does a fantastic job portraying emotional stories in the aggregate. The overarching narrative choices and writing are deliberate and deeply capture a wide range of real emotions. But today, I want to narrow the scope and look at how the show uses one word to tell just as many stories. Swearing is common in Bojack Horseman, but this curse word is intentionally spoken rarely. Its infrequency allows it to carry much more weight, and the writers of the show use it with that same level of diligence to tell a story. But like the overall plot and the characters, the word's meaning, how it feels and what it says, evolves from its first use in Season 1 through its final use in Season 6. It's easy to lose sight of its purpose other than as a punctuation of thought because of the series' length, but each use is careful and builds upon the last whether they are directly connected or not. It's pretty incredible that the writers were able to build an entire narrative into one word. So I say we take a look at how they did so. The use of the word f does not exactly crescendo in importance or weight, but it increasingly explains change and baggage for Bojack's character. So it makes the most sense to tackle each instance chronologically. Before we start, the only instances we'll be discussing are when the word is used fully and contiguously. That may sound pedantic, but the show actually goes to great lengths specifically to avoid the word in many situations. Sometimes the switch is played for a gag, like in season one, when Diane's brother says his family is American as fuck, as in the Vietnamese soup, because, you know, they're Vietnamese Americans. Other times, it's more obvious that the word is being altered, like in season three when Diane finds out she's pregnant and shouts motherfucker, but it's literally broken into two different episodes. Do you not know you're pregnant? Mother Back in the 90s, I was in a very famous team. Or in season six, when Jameson refers to one of her friends as a buck foy instead of, well, I think you get it. The writers reserved the word for specific instances, and the viewers see that even in season one. The first time we hear the word is when Bojack visits Herb Kazaz, his old friend and co-worker from the Horse and Around days, who now has cancer. Herb was fired from Horse and Around, and Bojack didn't stand up for him to the network executives like Herb wanted him to. After spending the day together, Bojack tries to apologize to Herb, and this is what happens. Okay, I don't forgive you. Herb, I said I'm sorry. Yeah, and I do not forgive you. Uh, n not sure you get what's happening here. This could be the last time that- No, I'm not gonna give you closure. You don't get that. And you abandoned me. And I will never forgive you for that. Now get the fuck out of my house. I would argue that this first use of the word in the series ends up being one of the more inconsequential compared to the ones that come after it for reasons we'll discuss later, but in this instance, it's jarring and purposeful. First of all, up until this point, Bojack and Herb actually have a really great time catching up. Herb has a good sense of humor about the whole firing situation, and it's pleasant to see the two reconnect. Then, this interaction happens, and their whole dynamic turns sour instantly. The audience knows that Herb is going to die, and this will probably be the last interaction these two ever share. Before we get into the Bojack's character of it all, it's worth noting here that in general, season one of the show sticks out like a sore thumb compared to seasons two through six. It feels like it toes the line between a goofy adult animated show a la Family Guy or the like, and what it eventually blossoms into as a strong narrative with deep undertones amid some great humor. We actually see that in this interaction, as Bojack pops his head back in the room to make a joke. Hey, this is a dumb question, but the gay thing and the rectal cancer thing aren't related. Get out of here! Never mind, stupid question, forget I brought it up. And it happens again after the argument turns physical and spills into the hallway. The show was never the same after I left, admit it! Some people prefer the later years! So there's some levity in this situation, but the dramatic side is still prevalent and important to showing where Bojack begins the series mentally. For starters, Bojack is basically in denial about his involvement in the firing, but not only does he lie about trying to save Herb's job, I did everything I could. He also completely misses the point Herb is trying to make. I had nobody. Everybody left. I knew all those showbiz phonies would turn on me, sure. But you? It's not my fault you got fired. I don't care about the job! I did fine. I had a good life. But what I needed then was a friend. 
Herb and Bojack were close friends, and Bojack presumably felt so guilty about not helping him save his job that he didn't even try to contact him. And instead of owning up to this and making amends, Bojack sullies away and fights with Herb before getting called out for his lack of self-reflection. You know what your problem is? You want to think of yourself as the good guy. Well, I know you better than anyone, and I can tell you that you're not. In fact, you'd probably sleep a lot better at night if you just admitted to yourself that you're a selfish goddamn coward who takes whatever he wants and doesn't give a shit about who he hurts. That's you. That's Bojack Horseman. Okay, so the first use of the word is quite a tonal change of pace, and it's the first building block for Bojack's character. Bojack does not care about how his actions affect others at this point, and he just wants to be perceived as a good person. We see this mentality a few episodes later when Bojack fires Diane from ghostwriting his book because he doesn't think he comes off likably. In reality, he's right, but that's because Diane's version shows Bojack with the warts and all, and he's just not ready to accept that. Season 2's use of the F word is quite similar. This one comes while Bojack is in New Mexico staying with another one of his old friends, Charlotte, and her family. This one's pretty tough to watch, but it comes after Bojack takes her daughter, Penny, to prom. Penny wants to sleep with Bojack after they return home. He says no, but literally leaves the door to his boat open. Charlotte ends up coming onto the boat, and this is what happens. Charlotte, I am so sorry. Don't. Don't you dare. If you are not out of my driveway in 30 minutes, I will call the police. And if you ever try to contact me or my family again, I will fucking kill you. There is a lot to unpack with this one, but I'll try to keep it brief because it ultimately serves a similar purpose to Herb's use of the word. Bojack basically spends the majority of the episode being completely morally corrupt. First, he supplies alcohol to Penny and her friends, which leads one of them to go to the hospital, but he does everything he can to dodge responsibility. Then, when he gets back to the house, he makes a move on Charlotte, who is married, and she denies him. Then, of course, he ultimately allows Penny to come inside the boat, and it appears that they're about to have sex, which, while not illegal, is wildly gross at best. Frankly, I've begun skipping this episode when I rewatch the series because it just gives me the willies, but it also is a crucial exposure of Bojack's character. With Herb's F-bomb in Season 1, we see that somebody close to Bojack feels his actions are irredeemable, and he simply doesn't have empathy. As a viewer, you might be inclined to agree, but he's not exactly shown to be at the point of no return. Then, this episode leaves you begging for Bojack to change and better himself. He is no longer a generic Hollywood prick. He is predatory, morally bankrupt, and entirely inconsiderate of others. In the following episode, he proves that there is a semblance of good in him when he goes to save Todd from the improv comedy boat, but season two's fuck is a poignant reminder that Bojack has an awfully long way to go before he can ever be considered a good person. Season three is where the word starts to change a bit. This third use is another moment of severing a relationship, in this case it's with Todd, but the tone of the word is much different. In seasons one and two, fuck is used in a demand. Now get the fuck out of my house. And if you ever try to contact me or my family again, I will fucking kill you. In season three, that's not the case. Bojack admits to sleeping with Todd's friend Emily, an act that ultimately ends Emily and Todd's friendship, and Todd says this. All right, I screwed up. I, I know I screwed up. I don't oh, know great. why. Oh, great. Of course. Here it comes. You can't keep doing this. You can't keep doing shitty things and then feel bad about yourself like that makes it okay. You need to be better. But the use of the word is not part of Todd's rant. It doesn't come until after. No, Bojack, just stop. You are all the things that are wrong with you. It's not the alcohol or the drugs or any of the shitty things that happened to you in your career or when you were a kid. It's you. All right? It's you. Fuck, man. What else is there to say? This time, the word is no longer used out of anger. It's used out of exasperation. Bojack has burned yet another bridge with a selfish action that harms somebody close to him. And Todd is upset, just like Herb and Charlotte were, but this is a fuck of exhaustion. Todd has seen this story time and time again with Bojack, and he's tired of dealing with it. 
Herb's and Charlotte's uses of the word showed that Bojack has done terrible things and he will have a hard time mending those fences, but Todd's use of it in season three suggests that there is no fence to mend. Bojack cannot undo the damage he caused by his selfishness in the past. He can only minimize the damage and do better in the future. Herb alludes to this when he allows Bojack to apologize but does not accept it, and Charlotte clearly wants nothing to do with Bojack ever again, but Todd's defeated fuck punctuates the fact that these are not individual instances of terrible behavior. Bojack's entire personality and mindset is the problem, and even people like Todd, who care about him deeply, cannot continue to surround themselves with it. Season 4 pulls the curtain back on Bojack's family life, and it spends a lot of time explaining the circumstances of those that came before him. In a vacuum, Season 4's F-bomb is pretty lame compared to the others. Bojack is talking to Hollyhock about his plan to make his dementia-ridden mother remember him. We'll do a horse and around here at the home. She'll love it because it's her son, Bojack. Okay. Then after the show, I'll come out and say hello, and she'll say, Bojack, is that you? And when her eyes spark with recognition, I'm going to sit down next to her, I'm going to squeeze her hand and get real close and say, Fuck you, Mom. What? This is the first time it's Bojack himself using the word instead of somebody else using it toward him. But on top of that, he basically uses it in jest. In each of the previous three seasons, there's already weight to the situations the word is used in, and the word is more of a cherry on top. In season four, it's more of a throwaway, situationally speaking. He doesn't have to use it. But that's the genius behind this one. He says he's going to tell off his mom for all of the terrible things she did and said to him that led to him being such a terrible person. Bojack blames Beatrice and his father for a lot of the reasons why he's so broken. While there's a pinch of truth in that, when it comes time for Bojack to tell her where she can shove it, he doesn't. Instead, this is what he does. Who is that? Ugh, bye, Mom. Bojack? Mom? But Bojack? Is that you? Yeah. It's me. uh, What is this place? This is where you live now. No. Is it? No. Mom. Where are we, Bojack? I just told you. I don't understand. Where where am I? You're... in Michigan. Michigan? Yeah. At the lake house. I am? it's It's a warm summer night, and the fireflies are dancing in the sky, and your whole family is here. And they're telling you that everything is going to be all right. Yes, that's right. Oh, it's all so marvelous. Can you taste the ice cream, Mom? Oh, Bojack, it's so delicious. The season builds up to a point where Bojack finally gets to legitimately use his F-bomb, but he doesn't take it. He tells her something that will make her happy. Instead of choosing the selfish option, he chose the righteous one. This is the first use of the word that doesn't come in the aftermath of a harmful event, but rather the rationalization prior to a harmful event. Instead of pointing the finger at his mother with the word used against him so many times, he decides it isn't worth it. Now, we can read into this a couple of different ways, but here's my line of thinking. Beatrice made decisions time and time again that stunted Bojack and made him less equipped to handle complex emotional decisions. I'll leave it up to you to decide how much that plays a role in his behavior as an adult throughout the show, but it undoubtedly plays some. From my view, Bojack realizes this but understands that he has done that and worse to people like Herb, Charlotte, and Todd, so he decides not to say fuck you in a moment of growth. He knows that if he had it his way, he could apologize to Herb, Charlotte, and Todd and make things right again, but he can't. So instead of burdening his mother with the same pain he feels for ruining those relationships, he chooses not to. Bojack finally had his chance to use the word on somebody else, but he stops himself before he even can, because he's finally showing empathy, something he clearly lacked before. It's worth noting that this is basically the only season in which he's truly happy by the end. At the end of seasons 1 through 3, he's mostly miserable and sometimes a little optimistic. At the end of season 5, he's back at rock bottom and looking to rebuild. The midpoint of season 6 shows him happy, but it's under the guise of dramatic irony, because we know what Pete Repeat is about to tell Hollyhock. By the end of the series, I wouldn't consider Bojack happy as much as he is content and understanding. 
The end of season four, following the restraint of his one fuck, is the only time he really goes out on a high note. All of this makes the F-bombs in seasons five and six even more heartbreaking. I'm grouping them together because they play off each other more directly than any other previous ones. In season five, the word comes out during the shooting of a scene on Bojack's new show, Filbert. Bojack gets hooked on pain medication throughout the season, and the addiction blurs his reality so much that he is completely unaware of what is real and what isn't. Drugged out and delusional, Bojack assaults his co-star Gina Cazador during a scene, and she follows it up with, What the fuck is wrong with you? In season six, Gina is again at the focal point of the F-word while shooting a new TV show. She clearly still feels the trauma from the choking, and this one comes from her new co-star, unnamed in the series. Uh. Ah. Ah. Oh. Ow! What the hell? Cut! Is everyone okay? I don't know. Do I have a concussion? You fell like a foot. Uh. Why did you drop me? Why'd you scream at me? Okay, let's everybody cool down. Do not tell me to cool down like I'm the crazy person here. I'm just trying to have a safe workplace environment. I had you. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm... I'm going home. Gina, we need to get the sequence, and we are already behind. Not my problem. He says the exact same thing to Gina that she said to Bojack in the previous season, and she instantly reaches for her neck and panics. Season 4's F-bomb proved that Bojack was capable of living a positive lifestyle with regard for how his actions affect others, but Season 5 showed that progress toward that lifestyle is not linear, and Season 6 showed that his regression left a lasting impact on yet another one of his victims. Season 5's use of the word is a bit of a combination of Seasons 1 through 3. It says, no apology could ever fix this, like Herb's. It has the fervor of Charlotte's and the disbelief of Todd's. It single-handedly undoes season four's growth, and it's terrifying to see Bojack reverting back into what looked to be his former self. I don't know I would go as far as to say season six's use of the word is foreshadowing, but it's most certainly implying something far different than any of the previous uses. Seasons one, two, three, and five all show how painful Bojack's actions were for the victims to Bojack's face, but season six shows how painful his actions were even away from him. This one shows that this trauma he's causing lingers. More importantly for Bojack, it shows that none of this stuff is going away. And just like his victims have to deal with the consequences of his actions, he's going to have to own up to them as well very soon. As far as I can remember, there's no use of the word in Season 6 Part 2, and I think that makes a lot of sense. There is no more room for apologies, rectifying the past, or quick growth. He has to reap what he sowed, and by the end of the series, he accepts that. Now, after going through all of these gripping instances, you might be wondering why I find this evolution of a single word so important. Well, it's a beautiful example of the economy of words. This is a concept I learned about in high school, and it has stuck with me above almost everything else. So, here's Kevin from The Office explaining it. Why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. Thanks, Kev. In solely written formats, novels, or print articles, or the like, an economy of words is almost paramount to being a successful author, because clear and compelling communication is the ultimate goal. However, in a medium like television, there are plenty of other factors that can evoke the essence of word economy. This whole video has been about a string connecting Bojack's character from the beginning of the show to the end of the show, and the only pin keeping the line together is one word. It's a masterclass in storytelling and what dialogue can do. The content of the dialogue is only one way to tell the story, but within that content, there can be so many other ways as well. If you had never watched this video, you would still understand how heavy all of these situations are, and you would probably still be able to recognize Bojack's change in mindset and character. But the fact that the writers of this show made a conscious and intelligent effort to create a through line like this on purpose, well, that's something special. The show is not just talking to you, but speaking with you. It's begging you to engage with it further and interact with it despite having nobody on the other side of that screen. If a TV show could connect you that much to its narrative, it succeeded in telling its story. And that is why this one word is so important to BoJack Horseman. I Get what the, the fuck, fuck is you, you, mom? I-